That's what he's saying.
virgin forever, forever, forever. Glory, glory, Lord. Belongs to you, Jesus. It all belongs to you, God. Father, we thank you right now in the name of Jesus that you allowed us through the blood to pay homage to you today. You have moved all the obstacles which hinder us from receiving from God our Father. That it's through the blood that we have been redeemed and we have been saved. Now, Lord God, we stand before you seeking your wisdom your understanding so that we can appreciate and value what you have given to us through Jesus Christ. And Lord God, that you might be admonished in all that we do and say. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Thank you. Thank you. I thank God for today. I, I believe that in every circumstance and situation there is 
a answer from God. We are in a political and an economic situation that the United States haven't ever seen. Our parties of Democrats and Republicans are constantly going at each other in an unparalleled time. There are more unemployed people here in America than it has been in the last 15 to 30 years. The divorce rate is growing up, uh, growing. Um, the, the, uh, the alcohol abuse, the drug abuse is grow growing constantly. And we are in a state of peril. And every generation, we always say Jesus is coming. In every generation that we face perilous times, we say that Jesus is coming. I'm not saying that Jesus is not coming, but we got to face this with some optimism here based upon the word of God. I am here to inform you that is God is going to use you to bring the change. I want to help somebody today, and I want to go straight into the fact of it, is that he's not going to break the sky. Not today, not tomorrow, because he wants you to bring the change. I want to make myself real clear, because oftentimes we look at the perilous times. You know, they've been talking about perilous times since the day that he left. Even the disciples were looking for him to break the sky when they were being hung upside down. They was thrown into tar pits and they were set on fire. The children were burned at stakes. They was looking for Jesus to break the sky. But what our Lord and Savior want to do is break you. He wants to break you open that you will bring water to the land, to the dry spot. He wants to use you to bring sunlight into a cloudy day. He wants to use you to bring a change in our society. And there's no way possible that you can do that if you're constantly looking at what's going on. If you are perplexed about what's happening, it is perilous times. If you are confused about what's happening, it is perilous times. But God has put the hope of glory in you. That means out there in our social media land that if you accept that Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, God has put the future in you. God has put the answer in you. God has made the resolve that he's fully able to do exceedingly and abundantly of anything that you ask or think according to what you believe that he's able to do. Yeah. Do anybody got that out there today? Because every time I turn the news on, there's some always conjuring up. There's something always happening. Now they want to give an answer to the plague and induce us with something that might even make us all worse. The antidote, they are saying some of the antidotes that the government is trying to put regulations on that has not been tested on human beings. So therefore, they don't know what the adverse effect of this is. They don't know what's going to happen to you five or ten years down the road. Me and my wife was looking at some statistics and how that this birth deformity has increased in our society. That we have also have, she said that she's never seen, she works in this field, she never seen so many people so mentally messed up in our society that comes from birth. So I looked at some more information that the poison that's in our food comes from the ground and our government is citing it saying it's okay. They're making food that don't bring any nourishment to your body, just bring money to their pocket. So therefore, we keep blaming them when God said, if my people, which are called by my name, will humble themselves. Now, let me give you an understanding. Mean, humble means that you submit to him. Humble doesn't mean you're crying. Humble doesn't mean you're sad. Meaning that I submit to the God of heaven and earth according to his word. He will answer from heaven. If my people which are called by my name will humble themselves and turn from their wicked ways. Wicked here is that you have leaned to your own understanding long enough. Yeah. Oh, let me help somebody here. 
How do I know that we lean to our own understanding? It's because we are living in perilous times. Perilous times come from what you have displayed, what you have put out there, what you have put forward. It ain't just our government. Our government in America would not be our government except we allow it to be. So let's bring it home. My children are like they are because of me. We want to blame this young generation saying they out of sorts. That's because you out of sorts. If you want to know the answer to the problem, go look in the mirror. So we're going to look at the mirror again, and I've been dealing with this topic for the last couple of Sundays, but we're going to get some meat off the bone today. I know that I said it, but we're going to get it done today in the spirit of the living God so that we can see that he has commissioned us to bring a change in the earth. If you want to ever be in a situation that you need help, you got to recognize what you need help from. I know that the spirit of fear is contemplating everybody's thoughts. And what I mean by that, a lot of things are happening, and but you don't understand why they're happening. I'm going to give you the answer. It's because of us. God is not pouring something out of heaven that we don't deserve. God is not allowing circumstances or situation to come upon us that we don't deserve. That's for the sinner man. But we've been talking about getting the hookup. Somebody say, I need to get the hookup. Because I'm tired of reaping what I sow. I'm tired of getting the vomit from other societies. I'm tired of getting the leftovers from the table. I'm tired of the rich people saying I need to stay poor. I'm tired of my government saying that I'm going to give you a stimulus check to make it till tomorrow. I don't need an answer from man. I need an answer from God. The unemployment rate is so tremendous that we keep missing the fact that being unemployed, that means some child is going hungry. You know, just because you're eating doesn't mean that some child going hungry now. That doesn't mean some adult is about not about to kill the spouse because they don't know how to cooperate with one another in this time. There's a lot of people that are depending on um, uh, drugs that are getting across the counter. All because they can't deal with what we are in. Perilous times. So I say, I said, I need a hookup, God. And I, I don't, I don't want to give you the concept and going all the way back through for the last two Sundays. I'm going to ask that if you will take it upon yourself to revisit the last two Sundays that we have talked about this. So that I don't have to reiterate it so that we can get some meat off the bone. It might not be a shouting time today, but it's going to be an information that you can apply it to yourself for your change. Say somebody say for my change. You see, what God has done, he's moved men out of your way so that you can come straight to him. Amen. That when he raised Jesus from the grave, he set him in all authority in the flesh so that you will have no excuse to come unto God. Amen. The devil can't stop it. The, the devil can't stop it. His, his demons can't stop it. Your brothers and sisters can't stop it. Your enemies can't stop it. You have direct access access to God. You don't need to call him on no cell phone. You don't need to Google him. He, you can go straight to him because he's waiting on you. He's giving you an invitation. He's giving you a hookup. He's giving you the answer to every problem that you may face. And the reason I'm preaching in this aspect, because you need to know who your God is. Amen. He ain't me. He ain't you. He has overcome this world. He's already overcome every circumstance. He's already overcome every situation. He's already overcome that you ain't coming to church. He's already overcome that your lack of faith. He's already overcome that you ain't giving. He's already overcome it all. And he still gave you the Look up. He's already overcome your rebelliousness. He's already overcome your double minded. He's already overcome the witches. He's already overcome the demonic spirits. He's giving you the hook up. So if you 
believe. Somebody say, if I believe. If I, believe. I got the hookup. Hook so let's not wrestle with this scripture too much further, but let's just revisit it so that we can find out where we need to go. Hebrews chapter 10. Hebrews chapter 10. Verse, we're going to start from verse 9 today so that we can get some clarity of where we're going in the meat of the gospel. Somebody say the meat of the gospel. If I can find Hebrews in my Bible, there it is right there. Oh, have mercy. A pastor that don't know where Hebrews is might need to get saved again. He might need to get saved and baptized all over again. Hebrews chapter 10 and just listen as I do the reading so that we can get clarity of thought. Hebrews chapter 10. Let's just start from verse 9. Then said he, lo, I come to do thy will, O God. He take away the first. Let's not revisit all this. He took away that thing which hinders your relationship with God. He took away the first that he might establish the second. He might establish the perfect law of liberty. We have the law of the flesh. Now we have the law of the spirit. It is called the perfect law of liberty. He's established it by what he done. Y'all with me? So let's move on. And by this which we were, we are sanctified through the offering of his body of Jesus Christ once and for all. And every priest standing daily ministering and offering oftentimes the same sacrifice which can neither be taken, take away sins. But this man, after he had offered one sacrifice for sins forever, sat down at the right hand of God. Somebody say the right hand of God. Right hand of God, I mean, it's in all power and all authority. Old traditional people often say that's at my right hand. No, it's not. What that right hand means that he's in the position of all authority and all power. He's in a place of rulership. There's no questioning about his throne. There is no ideology that surpasses his understanding. He's done this in the flesh so that you can have the hookup. God has set him in the place so that you can rely on him. Spirit, soul, and body. Y'all with me? So he says at the right hand of the Father, verse 13, from henceforth expecting, somebody say expecting, expecting. waiting until you come into the realization of it. Listen to what I just said. Waiting for you to come into the realization of it. Because in him we live and move and have our being. We are bone of his bone, flesh of his flesh. Therefore, God has put the enemy under our feet. Let, 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 let me help you. I, I can't do that, so we got to move on. God has put everything under Jesus Christ. And remember now, you are in him. So therefore, God has put everything under you. But as a man thinketh, so is he. If you can't believe this, you'll never walk in this. He sanctified you and set you apart through this truth. That means if you believe it, God has put you in a place where the enemy cannot touch you. Amen. I'm dealing with that on Wednesday night. But if you don't think that, the enemy still have access to you. So therefore, you got to believe. Somebody say believe. Let's move forward so we can get some of this today. From henceforth expecting till his enemies be made his footstool. For by one offering he has perf perfected forever them that are sanctified. That's 15. Whereof the Holy Ghost also is a witness to us. For after that he has said before, this is the covenant. Oh my God. Everything that he just spoke of before, this is what he's established between you and him. A covenant in the old time could not be established except the shedding of blood. That means is that somebody had to die before that covenant has credence. Before that covenant meant anything, somebody had to die. In most cases, it was animals, but that covenant can often be broken because animals could not suffice with God. So through Jesus Christ, the blood of Jesus Christ, God established a covenant with you. So that you might be a beneficiary of his goodness, of his mercy, and his grace. So that you will know that the enemies are put under you. I know this might be a much for Sunday morning, but we need to get some meat off the bone. 
I know oftentimes I preach about it so that you can probably get it, but I need you to understand what the text is talking about so that it can become your reality. Amen. Oftentimes I hear prophets and oftentimes I hear people with words of wisdom and words of knowledge. Those are baby tools. They do not give insight to the will of God. They give insight to the individuals in which they are dealing with. But it's through the blood that we inhabit or get the nature of God so that we are think like he think. See like he think. See like he see. Hear like he. Jesus said, I do nothing except I see my father do it. I say nothing except I hear my father say it. That's not a gift. That is a nature and a character that's in covenant with God. If the gifts could have supported you, it would not need the nature of God. But God said he put his enemies under your footstool based upon his nature. That means his will for you. Does that make any sense? I'm trying to get you to see your hookup. So when you are downtrodden, when you are facing adversity, know that God has worked this thing out for your good already. He ain't got to do it. It's already been done. If you believe, he's fully able to do what he said. Therefore, the covenant that he's made with us is according to his ability. Somebody say his ability. His capability of his strength, his might. Therefore, he relies on what he's able to do. Therefore, if you trust in him, what he's able to do, you will see. Amen. Amen. Oh, y'all let me. See, prophets can't see what God sees. They interpret what they see in the spirit in part. I'm going to prove that to you in just a minute. They teach in part. They prophesy in part. That means they only see a speck of your victory. They only see a tiny speck of what God has done. But I'm here to tell you that God want to over inundate you with his love. That means he want to flood you from the crown of your head to the soles of your feet with his covenant. He's getting ready to get rid of the part. I'm going to prove it to you in a minute. And oftentimes we admire the gifts, but the gifts are in part. That's because I'm not loving you with his love. When they teach in part, they oftentimes teach about themselves. They put themselves in positions based upon the anointing of in part. Therefore, you are creating a division in the body. And when you create a division, God can't put the enemy under your feet. He's waking, waiting for a people that will love one another. Let me help you there. The scripture says that this is the proof that I was here. How you show love one for another. He didn't say how you prophesy one to another. He didn't say how you teach to one another in part. He did not say establishing churches on every corner in part. He said that when you love one another like I love you, I will bring your enemies under your So now the love of God has appeared in the flesh. That means Jesus Christ hung on the cross. He didn't hang up there in spirit. <laughs> he didn't hang up there just in soul. He hung up there in flesh. Now you say, what does that mean? When he died, the, the scripture said, or the theologians have found out that the blood that he was internally bleeding filled his liver, filled his lungs, filled some of his stomach. Every time he tried to breathe, blood came out of his nose. The nails that was pierced in his side, Mr. The nail, when they pierced him in his hands and in his feet, that he felt every bit of that pain. God didn't take away none of that. When they put thorns on his head and beat him all night, he didn't fight back. He took every blow. And the thorns on the head represent the disobedient ones. They poured vinegar on his sores, causing the agony to go even further. But when you look at it, you come looking down. But the reason he died is so that you can look up. He took 
that so that you might live. Oh, y'all ain't with me. He introduced that covenant. You didn't introduce that covenant. He did it. And he took it upon himself. The scripture said he was without sin and he took on your sin. And now you come into his sanctuary with an arrogant attitude saying, I'm just here just because you want me here. Really, dog? He died for your sin. He gave a covenant so that you might inherit all God's goodness. Now, let me break it down to us. I, I, um, we're in a society that we are looking at perilous times. Yes. Uh-huh. I'm going to show you in the scriptures that the perilous times does not supersede God's grace. Amen. Let me go on and give it to you. The scripture says where sin abounds, that means it's making progress. Uh-huh. It's growing every day. Uh-huh. It's affecting you spirit, soul, and body. Sin here is man's concept of who they think they are. It's talking about you too. We often blame our government, but don't you know, and I said it for a minute, you are America's government. We live in what they call a democratic society. If you feel compelled to go vote, go vote. Your vote might make a difference, but all I see is one devil put in another devil's seat. It don't make a difference to me. Because it ain't my Lord and Savior sitting on the throne in the White House. So therefore, I got to look at the one that has all authority. I got to look at the one that has established me in God. And God is the only one that can overcome what we are going through. This pandemic that we're in, there's one waiting on the wings for us. You say what that is. There's a pandemic that people are going to lose their place of residence. That they've been in 15 years, 30 years because they lost their job. See, now the adverse effects. See, people don't understand it. If you lost your job for six months or a year, after a while, you're going to see that see that society say, well, no, we can't help you no more. They're going to throw you out on the streets. Yes, they are. Yes, they are. We don't see the results of that just yet. They're already statistically, the pandemic is going to bring results of different types of pandemic. People are going to go hungry. People are going to be homeless. It's going to be a continuous flow of terror in our lives. It might be 10 or 15 years if, if God so allow us to get back on our feet here in America that we're going to feel this thing. Listen to me and listen to me carefully. I'm not preaching to you for your entertainment. I'm trying to believe God that you will look back to him. The only reason we're in this because we turn our back. To him. If my people, which are called by my name, turn from their wicked ways. Oh, y'all ain't with me. See, God ain't stunting the world. The world gonna be evil. It's those which are called by his name. Oh, Lord, have mercy. God is not going to bring the enemy under the world's feet. He's going to bring it under the feet of the ones that believe him. Let's get some meat off the bones in Jesus name. 16. This is the covenant that I will make with them after those days, saith the Lord. I will put I will put my laws into their hearts and in their minds will I write them and their sins and iniquities will I remember no more. Did y'all see that? Their sins and their iniquities will I remember no more. So we went on and we began to look at John chapter 1. Don't y'all don't turn the car. We got to move fast. John, 1 John 3.10. And it reads, in, the, in this the children of God are manifested and the children of the devil. Whosoever doeth righteousness is of God. Neither he that loveth not his brother. For this is the message that ye heard from the beginning, that we should love one another. I've been working with you from the context of what he done. That means died for you. Watch this now. That means what he died for our sins. That is the love of God. God is looking for people to love people like he loved people. Let me say that again. God is looking for a people to love people like he loved people. That's not gifts. When perfect love come, the gifts are put away. Let me help y'all for a minute. 
when perfect love is established in my spirit, I'm going to give up tongues. I'm going to give up prophecy. Why am I giving it up? Why am I putting it away? Because the scripture says that's like a child's gift. Children don't focus on the will. Children don't focus on the responsibility of someone else. They just look for themselves. And therefore, God gave gifts to children. So now God is trying to establish. Hold on. Let me say that right. God is establishing them that are called by his name that want to take up this type of character. I'm going to show you in the scripture so that we can get there. I've been dealing with you on his love, and he's trying to get us to see that without taking that type of love, you can't be perfect. You can't be perfect. It's not through the Levitical law, and that means it's not you putting away your corrupted seed or corrupted attitudes or corrupted ways. It's following his love Amen. and trusting in what he has done, not what you can do. Many say in the last day, did I not prophesy in your name? Did I not cast out devils in your name? Did I not teach? Did I not do great wondrous works in your name? Depart from me, ye worker of iniquity. He's talking about you did that for you. You didn't do it for me. Because if you did it for me, you would do it in the spirit that I am. That means in love. That means, God, I appreciate what you've done for me and how I show my appreciation by doing it for somebody else. We're going to get this in a minute. We're going to get it. I told you we need to get some meat off the bone because I've been all excited for the last couple of weeks. And God said, hold on, partner. You need to make the reality of this word true. That's for me now. That was for me. He, he was talking to me. He wasn't talking to y'all. So therefore, we need to see the boundaries of our walk. And let me show you the definition of liberty. The definition of liberty, that means that you have a right to live any way you want. That's what liberty means. In Isaiah, he said, the spirit of the Lord is upon me that I might preach and deliver you from captivity. That means I set you free. But for those who want to walk in perfect law of liberties, you live like you ought to live. Does that make any sense? The second law was put away because all it developed was children of disobedience. Hard-headed children. Hard-headed, disobedient, stubborn children backbiters truth breakers does that make any sense the ones that turn from the covenant and turn to their flesh but through love God said I'm going to raise you up Jesus a brothers and sisters that's going to be just like you because Jesus did this because he loved God y'all ain't with me this morning Y'all ain't with me this morning. I told you we're going to take some meat off the bone so that we can go home today. I know it's raining outside. My wife already got it lined up where we're going to go home and sit back and we're going to hopefully eat some crab legs. But what I'm trying to get you to see is that God has invited you and gave you the hookup. So therefore, I need to remind you of that covenant. You are looking for an answer and God has already given you the answer. You are crying over that which is lost, but God has called you to live and not die. You are crying over all that's being lost, all over those people that's being hurt, all over the people that are out in the street. But God said, why are you crying? Get up and change the place. Let me, I'm getting off of base for a minute. Let me, do you not know? Watch this. Now listen to, listen to the revelation of this. That when Moses was born, it was Pharaoh's daughter that raised him. Raised in Pharaoh's house. Y'all with me? But when he was born, the reason that he was raised in the Pharaoh's house, because his sister and his mother put him on the river to go down the river to escape the calamity, that there was a prophecy that there will be a king born in his day. 
So Pharaoh killed every child under two years old. Every child in the land except the Egyptian children, especially in the Hebrew people, he killed every child during that time. Now, this is what I'm getting ready to go. Do you not know that when Jesus was born, the decree came the same way? Now, you say, well, what has that got to do with me? God has declared that you are his child. And all these calamities that are going on, the devil is trying to kill you. Oh, y'all ain't getting it. And I want to tell you this now so that you can get the understanding of it. When that happened to those people, they were not comforted. God didn't come in and ease their pain. Oh, y'all are going to get it in a minute. When Moses' people were killed, God did not ease their pain. When their children was tossed into the lake with the alligators to be thrown, t torn a shred by alligators, drowned head first, he died at the edge of the sword by the soldiers, God did not relieve any of their pain. The exact same thing happened when Jesus was born. And it was prophesied in Isaiah. He said they shall not be comforted. And the reason the slaughter happened because there was a king born. So you are looking at the calamities. If you look at it in a proper perspective, the scripture said where sin abounds, therefore grace much more abounds. That means that God got a plan. That the enemy can't see. That the enemy don't even know where the child is. Don't even know what the child looked like. African Americans, you're wondering why you're being slaughtered? Because your king is born. And they are trying to find him. But you're not going to be comforted. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. So now I got to look for grace. God will put no more on you than you can bear. Except make a way of escape. People often miss that part. <laughs> God will put no more on you than you can bear. Now watch this now. Watch this. But except make a way of escape. That means it's going to come. It's going to seem like you can't bear it. But it's designed for you to take the escape rope. Oh, y'all didn't, didn't catch that, did you? God will put no more on you except make a way of it. But you want to cry at the calamity. You want to stay at the refrigerator and say it's empty. You want to say, Job, where are you? You want to prophesy to the wind, stop in Jesus' name. You want to raise the dead. But God said, I made a way of it. Let's see if we can find a way of escape. First John chapter 5, 16. If any man see his brother sin a sin, which is not unto death. I need y'all to hear this. I need you to hear it. Because I was questioned about what I said last week about sin. So I'm going to bring clarity to it to your minds today. So that you will understand why I say what I say. 85 to 95 percent of what I say is based upon the reality of the scripture. That means in the spirit of grace, I see God has operated on me. He's operated on his body so that you can live and not die. Most of you are laying on the table and you've gave up. He's already made you whole. So let's look at the scripture and see what it said. For if any, if any man see his brother sin, if any man see his brother sin, if any man see his brother sin, oh Lord have me, a sin which is not unto death, he shall ask, ask who? Ask God. 
and he shall give him life for them that sin not unto death. There is a sin unto death. I do not say that you shall pray for it. So there's different kinds of sin. What is the scripture saying? As long as you believe, somebody's going to pray for you for God to deliver you. And guess what God going to do? Deliver you. Y'all didn't catch it. This is the love that Jesus had for us. That he prayed for us while we were yet in our sins. And so now he wants you to take on that same nature to apply it to the perfect law of liberty. You don't spend your time doing what you want. You spend your time doing what he wants. He wants you to pray for them that fall short. He wants you to pray for them that have fallen in sin. He wants you to pray for them that has given up. He wants you to pray for them that despitefully use you. That when you take on this nature, watch this, when you take on this mind, you can see God move. Oh, y'all ain't with me. It can see sin abounding, but I see grace working. But it requires you to give up you and put yourself in a place where you're doing something for your brethren. You are doing it out of love. God help them. And you don't need to say anything to them when you're praying for them. You don't need to be in the pulpit and point out everybody's wrongs. If you're doing that, make sure you got grace with it. The law didn't have any grace. Oh, Lord, have mercy. Oh, I, let, me, let, me, let me go. Let me go. Let's turn to James. We already went all through this. It was James chapter 1, Mr. James 1, 25. But whosoever loveth not, un, let me say, whosoever loveth unto the perfect law of liberty, whosoever looking unto the perfect law of liberty, and continuing therein, and being not a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the work. Did y'all see that word, work? Faith without works. So there's no way that you can get from God unless you put your faith to work. Jesus believed God and he died. He put his belief or faith to work for you. Help me, Holy Ghost. Help me, go. I'm going to have to go on with this. So therefore, if I put my faith to work, then I will begin to see the grace of God work. Y'all didn't see that? Let me read the latter part of it to you. Maybe you didn't see it. He said... But do a doer, but uh, but a doer of the work, this man shall be blessed in his deed. There's nowhere in the Bible that said, if I prophesy, I will be blessed in what I do. I don't look it up. I can't find it. And maybe somebody out there in social media land come and call me, whatever, text me. It don't matter. But if I put myself in a position to help my brothers through prayer, God releases wisdom. God releases knowledge. God releases understanding. And while he's doing that, he's making sure I got everything that I need. Money will find you. But you got a job that's trying to find the money. Get to God's work and money will find you. Oh, Lord, have mercy. Let's go to work. Let's go to work. Herein, I'm going to say John, 1 John chapter 4, 17. Herein is our love made perfect that we may have boldness in the day of judgment because as he is, so are we in the earth. As he is, so are we in the earth. There's no way that you can be like him except you go through what he went through. And there's no way that you can go through what he went through except believe in what he done. I know that was a lot because you are going to go through some calamities. You are going to be persecuted. And God is going to leave you like a sheep for the slaughter. But some of you don't want to die because you're too selfish. 
You don't want to feel bad for somebody else because you're tired of being sad for yourself. That's called depression. Oh, no, I ain't going to go there. Let's move on. Let's move on. And then verse 18, there is no fear in love. But perfect love casts it out. Do you not know that was encompassed of gifts is fear? Me to walk no more than just a prophet, fears can still abide in me. It's true. How do I know that? Go read Corinthians where he said, without love, it profited me nothing to prophesy. Without love, watch this now, without love, me casting out devils, don't prophesy, missy, don't profit me. Go read the whole chapter, chapter 13. Without love, Having revelation knowledge. Uh Uh-oh. And I know God has blessed me with revelation knowledge. But without love, it don't mean nothing. Love is long-suffering, patient, kind, and it never gives up. Where sin abounds, grace therefore much more abounds. You know why it's abounding? Because love is at work. Watch this, sister. Love covers the faults of other people. But we want to be a magnifying glass. Let me show you where you're wrong. Let me show you where you mispronounced this word. Let Let me show you where you ain't quite right. So we lose the context in which God has given his grace so that we can grow up mature. So let me sing a song. Sing a song. Without love, it profits me nothing. Oh, Lord, have mercy. I I can't deal with household problems. Let's move on. He said here, "Therein, there is no fear in love, but perfect love casted out fear because fear is has Torment. Torment here is the same scripture when the scripture says that the devil believed and trembled. The same scripture, the same word. Torment and tremble is the same thing. Therefore, it cannot receive God's reality. Do you not know that there's a glory on Jesus Christ that the devil can't even approach him? I ain't talking about talking. He can't even come to his bidding. He can't even stand from an African-American 10,000 miles away. This is the glory that God wants for his people. But you won't get out of the way. And I'm not talking about your wrongs. I'm talking about you receiving his love. He given us the hookup so that we can be like him. You think you tired? I'm tired too. Watch this. If I'm tired, guess who else? Jesus tired too. But his grace is sufficient. Good God Almighty. Paul was telling him, Lord, you know, I got all these problems. I got these thorns in my side. He said, Paul, my grace is sufficient. You think you're wrestling against sin? This sin killed this man. Oh, y'all ain't he? You thinking you dealing with being alone? Being alone, he hung up on the cross and everybody spit on him in the process. You haven't suffered unto death. Oh, Lord, have mercy. Let's move on. But we're talking about the grace. Let's talk about the grace. David Frederick, move on. Romans 5.20. Moreover, the law entered that the offering might be abound. But where sin is, that's that scripture that I keep quoting in y'all, where sin abounds, grace do much more abound. Romans 5.20. I want to get that in your spirit. Romans 5.20. That means if you look out in the land and see how corrupt people are, don't allow it to make you corrupt. Right. 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 Amen. Jesus put it this way, that many people's love is going to wax cold because they're looking at what's going on around them. Go back and search the scriptures. He said, in the last days, many loves shall wax cold. 
That means they're not going to be burning for God. Oh, Lord, have mercy. You know if I ain't going to love God, you know I ain't got no love. I ain't going to love you. If I ain't going to do nothing for God, you most definitely know I ain't going to do nothing for you. You can chalk that up on the board. Click. <laughs> come out in the rain for you. I ain't going to come out in the rain for God. What am I going to come out in the rain for you for? He said, in the last days, many love, many love. He said they got love, but it's going to wax cold. And as trips decided, this thing to my lukewarm individuals. And those kind of people God is going to spew out of his mouth because they make his stomach upset. It ain't that he didn't want you. It just can't settle in his stomach. Have you ever had something that, that messed your stomach up? I don't care what you do. You can try to lay there all you want to. After a while, he's. <laughs> Guess what you're going to do? You're going to get up. <laughs> if you don't, it's going to be there with you. I'm just trying to clean it up. And when Jesus said them that are lukewarm, he's going to throw them up. Or maybe, maybe this is just for me. I'm trying to get you to the point that you walk this life not according to what you think or you feel, but based on the covenant that he made with you. If he started the covenant, he's fully able to perform it. It doesn't matter what the world is doing. It doesn't matter what's going on as calamities. It doesn't matter what our president say. It doesn't matter what the politicians are talking about. It doesn't matter who you vote into office. It doesn't matter. That thing doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if the grocery store is closed. It doesn't matter if the supermarket prices rise. It doesn't matter if they give out a gas. His grace is the People's love get cold when they face these kinds of obstacles. My grace is sufficient. Matthew 24, 12 is what I was telling you. And because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. Go back and read it. Romans 5.20, I already read that one. Let's move on. First, 2 Corinthians 9.8. 2 Corinthians 9.8. Somebody say, I'm going to get hot in a minute. And God is able to make all grace abound towards you. That ye always have all sufficiency in all things. You know what that word thing is there? Let me finish the scripture and then we come back to it. All sufficient in all having always having all sufficiency in all things may abound to every good work. You remember what I said a few minutes ago? That when you put your faith to work in love, God will meet your need. Do you not know that the reason sometimes that you are without is because you're not doing his work? Jesus. It's true. When you become and utilize, God can use your soul as a platform. God will come in and bless you when the enemy is trying to paralyze you. Y'all ain't with me. I try to get you to see that God's grace has covered you from beginning to end. Now watch this. If you will pay homage to him or you respect him or you will honor him if you take on that same mind. And when you do that, you begin to do the work of ministry. It's called the work of ministry. He said to the perfecting of the saints for the work of ministry. Gifts can't do that. They're supposed to came together and edified the body, but because they came in part, they can't see the overall objective of God. And when because you can't see the whole vision, that means you're not going to walk with me. 
But if you can walk with me in love, it doesn't matter what you see. I can be the most divine prophet that ever be. I can read you from head to toe. I can see your past, your present, and your future. I might be able to read what you're thinking and you're feeling. But if I ain't doing it in love, how can two walk together except they are? That means that God wants his body to come together in love. That means my focus is on my hookup. Y'all ain't with me. Y'all ain't with me. I've been around this thing quite a few times now. I've been in this Christianity world for quite a bit. And I've been around my brothers and sisters. And I can see the love of Christians. I can see the love of believers. I can see the love of my brothers and sisters fading away. What do I do, God? He said, bring it to me. I will put no more on you than you can bear. Except make a way of it. Going to him, he keeps me hot for him. Oh, y'all, somebody got to get this thing. Because I recognize the hookup. This ain't by my strength, by my power, but by his ability. And every time I fall short, I look up and see the road already paved. I had this dream real quick, brother. I had this dream, and this dream was a long, long time ago. And I was on this path, and I went through this town. I went through some desert little place. I, I was going through all in and going around some. And I came to these woods. This is short term of y'all. I came to these woods from one end to the other. And I, oh, I couldn't navigate through all those woods because it was so thick. You couldn't even see one tree above the other. And I'm questioning, should I go back? But when I looked up, I saw a path fall out of heaven right down in front of me, cut all the way through the woods. What if I'd have gave up and turned around? I would not have found the grace. There are a lot of obstacles before us. There are a lot of hesitations before. There's a lot of things that's trying to turn you around. But you got to look up. Oh, y'all ain't with me. He's made the way of escape. He will empower you, sister, if your attention gets off of you and start focusing on your brother. Oh, Lord, have mercy. Let, give me... Give me one social minute, minute. Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Give me one social minute, social media minute. Somebody, go ahead, go ahead. I don't know what that adds up to. <laughs> First Thessalonians 3.12. And the Lord make you to increase and abound in love. Oh, God, help me. I hope I'm, I hope I'm able to teach you're wondering why you are going without. You're wondering why calamities are constantly on your back. You're wondering why our society is eating up themselves. Have you ever wondered what people are actually killing themselves by killing the person that's next to them? It's true. If I kill you, brother, I might be killing my way of escape. If I'm not helping you, I might not be helping myself. Oh, Lord, have mercy. Help me. We got to go. We got to go. But let's finish this one. Then we'll go home. First Thessalonians 3.12. And let's read it. And the Lord make you to increase and abound. And abound. And abound. In love. Look what it says. One towards another. Oh, God, help me. I can't, I can't, we got to go. And towards all men. What he, the scripture said, God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that who shall believe him should not perish but have everlasting life. God so loved everybody. And he rewarded that man his rightful place in a all authority. Y'all ain't getting it. He died for everybody else. And God put him in a place, can't nothing touch him. And you supposed to be in him. And you're wondering why everything ain't submitting itself to you. Because you won't live in him. 
Oh, Lord, have mercy. Let's get ready to go. Please don't play nothing. I'm sorry, because I got to go. And towards all men, even as we do towards you. Now, why is Paul instructing that? That means, sister, that when you share your faith, you are rescuing somebody out of trouble. Paul said, I'm sharing with you what he done for me. So that you will know how to abound in God's love. The perfect law of liberty is not being spread because your hearts are getting cold. Because it's the love of God that pulls somebody else out of degradation, out of decay, out of a dying state, out of darkness. But you took it upon yourself and think you something in somebody. God said, you have missed my grace. Oh, Lord, have mercy. A simple attitude adjustment is what we need. And I'm hoping that you got the hookup. I'm hoping that you will remember how he loved you. I'm hoping that you will gravitate to what he done for you. And that's how you treat others. Father, we thank you right now in the name of Jesus. We thank you for your loving kindness and your tender mercies. I thank those who are out there in social media land. And I'm asking God's grace to meet you right where you are. That the love of God might come unto you and strengthen you in Jesus' name. Amen and amen.